I felt like this video needed to be made because so many people, particularly in my Twitch streams, were assuming that the reason Apple was going with their own custom-made CPUs on the Mac line was so that eventually that could result in the Mac getting cheaper, you know, below $1,000 starting price and having good performance. Now, as cool as that would be, and I've made videos on how, you know, a cheaper entry-level MacBook that was maybe made out of lesser materials, heaven forbid plastic, the same thing they make their $250 flex pods out of, but ultimately, I don't think that's what's going to happen, and I want to crush those dreams you guys have so that we can have realistic expectations on what the ARM Mac is going to be moving forward. It's a fascinating topic, and I'm very interested to watch this transition take place over the next couple years. Let's begin. <laughs> So it is my personal belief that while we're not hearing too much about the ARM MacBook right now, other than it's an ARM MacBook, I think Apple's going to introduce some type of new design language when it comes to the actual hardware. Yes, it will be running a modified version of macOS. Apple will have some fancy new name for it. I always refer to it as macOS ARM. Maybe it will emulate old apps, maybe it won't, but I think Apple, due to catering to the average consumer and catering to more of a massive market, they won't just make a MacBook that's exactly the same as the MacBooks we have currently and happen to say, oh yeah, this one has an ARM CPU in it though. Average consumer, they don't know what that means, they don't have an idea of the different architectures, and that's going to be kind of hard for Apple employees to explain in Apple stores, if those ever open up. So my guess is that the MacBook ARM is going to have some type of new design take, maybe more curved edges on the side, maybe a slightly thicker display panel on the top piece so that you could perhaps have better webcams, or maybe sneak some face ID sensors in there, because I think there needs to be an aesthetic difference to the ARM MacBook so people can see, oh, this is what what Apple would design the Mac like if they didn't have to worry about fans, if they didn't have to worry about accommodating Intel CPUs or, you know, also third-party GPUs. If Apple's going built all in-house and they're going to be designing the processors and GPUs themselves, this is how they would like it to be. So maybe this means one size bezel all the way around and basically giving a lot of that beautiful hardware treatment the iPad got, but in the Mac line, which feels so neglected these days. The main point I want to come back to with this, though, is that the purpose of the ARM Mac is not to make Macs necessarily cheaper. It's to provide more powerful Macs and provide exclusives to the Mac that cannot be replicated outside of Apple's own hardware. This is a very genius move if you consider that there's so much competition on the market that's able to have similar access to the same CPUs and GPUs that Apple has and other companies like AMD are outperforming Intel in many categories and that means that because Apple is stuck with Intel and they're in contracts with Intel for better pricing and stuff like that, Apple can't just change their mind and swap out to a different brand who happens to have better performance for the buck. So the genius of going in-house is that Apple gets to apply their genius CPU development team, which is making the crazy fast processing speeds we got on the iPad Pro with the A12Z chip. Basically, what they've done with the smartphone market, which is like iPhone has the fastest, most powerful CPU, and other companies are trying to catch up, but they still can't quite do it, and Apple will always have a couple year lead on them. They want to bring that advantage to the Mac line because that's the thing if the macbook has some type of apple made cpu whether it's a a15x chip or they'll have some fancy new name for it no other laptop or pc on the market will have access to that cpu or gpu i don't think apple's gonna outsource them and that will mean that they get extreme performance that no one else can get and yeah that just kind of means both camps of pc versus mac get to divide themselves even more because now you can say well i'm going with a mac because it has this really really powerful arm cpu and then someone else can be like yeah, but then you have to use a Mac and you can't use anything else with that. And Apple will be fine with that because it basically ties the Mac closer in with the ecosystem. But at the end of the day, I do think it's better for consumers in the long run. In the short term, it may seem rather frustrating because I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of third-party apps that do not optimize on day one for their new Mac OS ARM platform, whatever they call it. A lot of apps like Minecraft or the Adobe Suite or Steam are going to be like, eh, no, we don't feel like optimizing for that and there's not a huge presence that is buying this new ARM MacBook on day one, so we're not going to worry about it for a little while, so that will be the compromise of going with this laptop at first, but over time, once we get to the point where software and third parties have adapted to it, Apple will be able to have more control over when the MacBooks need to be refreshed, because right now, it's kind of a nightmare how often they refresh the insides of MacBooks, and people are still so dang confused about when the right time to buy a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro is, because Apple will refresh them, because 
constantly like, hey, we want the latest Intel processors, or we want a new GPU, or the butterfly keyboard is falling apart. Oh shoot, we should refresh it. Here's the new Magic Keyboard. But then new processors come out like six months after the MacBook was refreshed. So Apple goes, well, I guess we want it to have the latest stuff. So they refresh it again. And then sometimes they go like a year and a half without updating anything like the Mac mini. But other times they go six months and refresh it entirely like they did with the 16 inch MacBook Pro last year, which came out just like six months after the 15 inch MacBook Pro was refreshed. So this at the end of the day, I don't think is what Apple wants to do. I think they want the Mac line to be a lot more like the iPad line where you get one refresh, very noticeable, very obvious what the changes are every single one year to 18 months when they've developed a CPU or GPU that's faster or significantly noticeably better so that they can launch those and you can expect when they refresh and basically turn the MacBook refresh cycle into more of what the iPhone or iPad is. That way people can know when it's a good time to buy and know when to expect another update. I'm very curious to know if they're going to have customizations for the ARM MacBook. I mean, sure, they will let you customize storage or perhaps maybe because of the power efficiencies of ARM, they will let you have LTE as an option at checkout, just like the iPad. I think that would be great, but you know, currently we have lots of different Intel CPUs to choose from when checking out a MacBook. So if Apple's designing the CPUs and GPUs themselves, will they give you different customizations to choose from? Maybe. Maybe they'll just keep it like the iPad and just have one CPU and GPU for every size, every model. But at the same time with things like the afterburner card on the Mac Pro, maybe they'll do something like that. I'm not saying exactly like that, but some type of extra GPU performance boost that they give to the 16 inch MacBook and not the 13 inch for power consumption reasons and stuff like that. But what it essentially will do will make the Mac insanely powerful compared to competitors and make software optimization a little bit annoying in the short term, but consumers I think will benefit from it in the long term. This does not mean that Apple is making an $800 or a $600 MacBook just because they're designing things in house. I know some people want that, but honestly, I still think Apple is going to direct you towards the iPad. If you're into the computer market and you're looking for not a computer that's a computer, but not under the $1,000 price tag, yeah, they're going to ask you to just get an iPad Air, iPad Pro. If you want to spend more than $1,000, yeah, you can go with a really powerful MacBook. I'm guessing Apple doesn't want too much overlap here, so I'm not counting on them releasing a MacBook under $1,000 anytime soon. I don't think that's the goal of the ARM MacBook, so have realistic expectations, people. At the end of the day, we're getting better Macs. They're going to be more powerful and reasonable for the price that you're paying, but I still think the price that we're paying now for our MacBooks are going to be about what the ARM MacBooks are going to cost. There could be an unveiling for one as soon as Worldwide Developers Conference, which holy crap, that's less than a month away. Finally, the countdown has begun. And my guess is that it's going to start at something like $1,300. But let me know what you think the ARM MacBook is going to cost by hitting me up over on Twitter, joining my Discord, and we can speculate pointlessly over there. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.